Hello everyone, uh, thanks for joining the call. Uh, this heads up is to give you idea about what we plan to cover in those two days of bootcamp which is happening on April 14th. So let's start. First of all, am I qualified to talk about a subject which is under research? Uh, so uh, uh, I have learned this through hard way. Uh, since past uh, three years, I am working on this uh, in this field. Uh, touching OpenCV, OpenVX and deep learning. So we have built a product uh, using these technologies. Uh, I just wanted to show you a demo and then we can take it forward from there. This is, we are just launching our application here. This is a lock screen rendered and this is the camera rendered. It basically means what the camera is seeing in the cart and around its vicinity. This is a log screen where we will see all the system logs again and this is the shopping list where all the products will be displayed that are being placed in the cart or a shopper wants to buy. So let's start with adding products. Here we go. We have added one product. You can hear the beep on a successful addition of any every product. We've added one more. Here you can see Rex powder has been added. As you can see, the system is very quick. Now let's see if a system can detect two similar looking products. Both packets look similar. We dropped one and yes, system has successfully added the right product. So it is not confusing between the two similar looking products. It picks up the two similar looking products as well. Now we will just remove the products. As you can see, you just have to pick the products from the cart and system will tag it as a re product removed. You can see we removed two products over here. Now there, there, may, there may be a scenario where you ha we may add some unscanned products also. Unscanned product is basically a product which is not having any reference in the DB. As you can see, we dropped this particular product and system is showing as unscanned item found and it will stop the system. So user cannot add more products. We do it again. So as you can see, once the product is added, it detects it as an unscanned item found. So this is, this is to make sure that a user only adds product which is in the DB. And if, it, if he adds any other product, it will be detected as an unscanned item found. Now this is a vicinity test, this is an interesting scenario. It may happen that there are multiple products outside the periphery of the cart. As you can see, there may be products on the aisle, products in some other cart and camera might see them. But if a camera is seeing them, it should not detect it. The system will start detecting the product only when it comes in the periphery of the cart. As you can see, it comes near it and then only it is added. So any product around the cart's vicinity or outside the periphery of the cart will not be detected or scanned. So there are two steps here. One is scanning the product which is done by the camera and second is the verification. We will remove few products for the next demo. So now we will test it with us two different tricks. We are adding, we are showing one product to this camera for scanning and we will add and let's see our verification per system works or no. We have shown it Rex. You can see the camera read it as a Rex baking powder, but it has not added yet. Now we will drop one Maggi noodles packet on the platform and it will, the product will be added. And as you can see, it detects, it adds Maggi noodles and not Rex baking soda. All right, so uh, this was about uh, the demo. Uh, uh, which we have built for our product. This is, I guess, uh, three, four months old. Uh, we have made a significant progress since then. Since then. Uh, so during this project, I learned a lot and I wanted to share those details with you. So hence I feel I'm sort of qualified. Those who do not know about machine learning, deep learning, uh, I think the best place is to uh, read this article, software2.o by uh, Andre Kapathi. Uh, he is deep learning hero, uh, I would say the most leading person uh, as of today, uh, including a lot of there are other fo folks as, as well. So if you if you go through his blog software2.0, 
you'll get a decent idea what he what he means by saying software 2.0 why he says so because uh, software 1.0 till date uh, was about you have a logic and you implement that logic using one of these programming language whereas software 2. Dot is completely different uh, it's all about setting the right weights using the best possible training uh, logic and there is no human involved so when there is no hum human involved there are very few ch very uh, rare chances of having uh, bugs or uh, faulty code and stuff like that the caveat is that you have to train your system with utmost accuracy and having as less uh, losses as possible so they are basically training in variation losses we will go through all these uh, uh, keywords when we actually uh, talk in the bootcamp but till now i mean uh, uh, for now uh, just go through this uh, blog and you will get a very decent idea what is the future and uh, how you should start thinking about applying deep learning machine learning to the real world problems all right the agenda for the bootcamp is going to be a practical approach uh, there are a lot of theoretical concepts which can which we which we will definitely talk but uh, i will give you largely about the intuition about those things uh, it's not a lecture or a class where we will do lot of math <clears throat> but essentially we will do lot of practical implementation in coding so hence i say uh, it's a practical approach rather than a a lecturing session i'll give you very decent intuition about the uh, convolutional op operations uh, how it how they are done uh, using some uh, graphics and all that uh, so you'll get a decent idea how it's how it's being done it's very important to get that intuition because unless you understand how it's being done it's very difficult to uh, to actually understand the whole technology the building blocks of cnn there are a lot of new keywords concepts um, i would say unlearn your old uh, knowledge and come up with a fresh mind so that you can absorb these new concepts new uh, terminologies concept uh, ideas tools in ml <clears throat> so what has happened is uh, all the companies uh, google uh, 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 apple microsoft all these companies have uh, are not actually working in silos but they have understood that this field is such a such a vast and large field that they themselves cannot uh, uh, make a ecosystem around it so hence they have reached out to the world and to tell you uh, what i mean to say is that all these projects are in open source domain so anyone can actually pitch in and <clears throat> work on the frameworks <clears throat> or use this technology for their use so it's it's completely open source everyone feels that uh, uh, it it's it's being it should be driven by everyone it's not it can you cannot work in silos so when i say so uh, i mean to say that there are a lot of tools and it is very important that you must understand which tool to use for your use case uh, because uh, if you are doing some prototyping that's perfectly fine but when you uh, but when you reach to a production level uh, then you may have to migrate to some other tools uh, so to keep that uh, journey smooth and safe uh, I, i will give you some tips about the choice of the tools i we will build our first first uh, cnn uh, and this is when when i say we which means like we all will uh, do uh, examples and exercises during the uh, 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 during the session transition from cnn to dnn we will build our first dnn application it's again going to be exercise strategies to improve the accuracy so there are no design patterns as as so to say but there are some good practices best practices which we can use uh, not everything can be applied to a specific application but there are some good things which we can learn from other applications and hence i say it's it's basically a strategy to improve the uh, accuracy rather than a design pattern to improve the accuracy so we'll we'll go through that as well 
Data augmentation, uh, I'll give you two approaches wherein you can augment the data beforehand or you can augment the data during the training. So I'll go through that with uh, a sample code. I'll give you some idea about the some topics under research. If you are coming from research background or research mindset, I think these tips may help you um, to explore those areas. We'll talk about a lot of various applications. Uh, tips to make a rig, very important to know. Uh, you cannot actually rely completely on these cloud-based uh, uh, machines because they are very expensive. <clears throat> and it, <clears throat> it is very important to understand that deep learning uh, is all about experiment. For that matter, data science field is all about experiments. So uh, I think you will be the most luckiest person in the world if you get everything running and uh, working in the first go. It's, it's, I think it's just not possible. So you have to do a lot of exercise and if you use, if you do that, on these cloud servers, it's going to be very costly. Uh, so that's the reason I say that you have to have your own rig uh, to work on it. Uh, so we will we will uh, take a look at how can we make a low cost yet very powerful uh, deep learning rig. Just a tech for tech text uh, uh, explanation of what we discussed uh, in the previous slide. Who should join the bootcamp? Uh, so if you think that you know machine learning, uh, so I think I, I would say uh, think twice for simple reason, unless you have made an application out of it, I think you have not really touched the soul of uh, machine learning or deep learning. So it is very important to, to actually build an application considering uh, a product or a production level uh, uh, grade. Uh, because when you do that, then you actually come across a lot of other issues, speed, performance, real-time nature, uh, data set, and blah, blah, blah. There are so many things. So I would say, uh, if you have not done that, I think this session is for you. There is no prior baggage is required. You may be very good at some programming language, languages, but that is not quite really required here. Uh, if you know Python or NumPy, I think that's that should suffice the need for this bootcamp. When I say NumPy, uh, it's basically a multi-dimensional uh, library uh, wherein you can define your multi-dimensional matrices uh, and uh, uh, use them uh, during uh, during our uh, implementation. Uh, <clears throat> and if you have some amazing applications in your mind. Uh, and which you think that that those can be uh, those can be uh, game changing using these technologies. I think this session again is for you. So applying knowledge to various applications, we will definitely talk about a lot of applications. But uh, 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 this session will also give you indication where to apply these uh, technologies and where not, uh, because. Uh, 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 the the, uh, the these applications are data hungry uh, so you need to have that data set if you have that data set clean data set uh, then you can use these applications uh, uh, otherwise uh, uh, it's not quite uh, uh, easy to basically uh, use this these applications but anyways we, we will talk about these applications in detail when we uh, uh, get into the session and it's time for Q&A. So uh, if you have any questions, uh, uh, I just wanted to give you some idea about the boot session. Uh, but uh, if you have any specific questions or uh, 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 want to understand more about uh, the bootcamp prior to that, uh, I think this is the time. Uh, so thanks so much. Uh, thanks for your patience. Thanks for listening to me. Uh, uh, and we are open for the questions. Thanks.